Hello, Matthew Carr here. I was doing some experiments in litho braking, which, if you're unaware, is the process of running into the ground at very high speeds and trying to survive. Now, on Kerbin I could do this pretty quickly, but what I really wanted to do was on the moon, and I found out you just can't do it. At 800 meters per second, which is the speed you come in from Kerbin to the moon, it just never works, no matter how big the craft is. This did, however, give me an idea in the field of making really light craft. This is an under two ton craft, including the weight of the Kerbal, and it's going to go all the way to the moon and back. More than half the weight of the craft is the jet engine, but the jet engine is a powerful tool for getting out of Kerbin's atmosphere. It can be even more powerful, but as you see, I run out of air and the jet engine cuts out fairly early before I've built up a ton of speed because I took a way too steep an ascent path out of the atmosphere. A pity, but since I'm using ion power for the rest of the flight, I actually have delta V to spare. Ion power is extremely efficient for delta V, but you have to carry around a lot of power, which gets kind of heavy. In this case, I'm using four solar panels, which is not actually enough to power the ion engine fully, so I also have some battery backup to tide me over in times where I need a short burst of thrust. I fast forward a lot here because it's a fairly standard moon trip, which we've all seen a few hundred times before, so there's no real need to dwell on it. Now, there's a long history of these light crafts going to the moon. There's been stuff on the forums, there's been other people on YouTube doing it, and there's a lot of posts on Reddit on how late can you make it to go to the moon. This is one of the latest entries I've personally seen, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's significantly lighter out there. In particular, I was inspired by the Reddit user Chicken Blender's Seat of the Pants series of craft, which are all very light and interesting craft for making all sorts of places in the Kerbin system. There's a link to some of his stuff in the description below. It is a fairly standard descent path here, making my periopsis as low as possible while not actually hitting the surface, and then just burning off all of my horizontal velocity while keeping my vertical velocity very low. This leads to a fairly efficient descent, and near the end it's pretty easy because the thrust weight ratio is high enough and the control on ion engines is fine enough that you can just do a nice, light, gentle landing. I do move over a bit to avoid this rock, not because it will actually impact the craft, but I really don't like actually landing on rocks. It feels wrong. And there we have 576 kilograms out of an original two tons landed on the moon. Just to plant a flag, and then my Kerbal can get back on board, and it's time to head back to Kerbin and land this thing. For some reason I have to rock it back and forth to get it to take off. I'm not sure why this is, because ion engines spool up to their full power immediately, and there's no reason it should be stuck to the ground, but I think the cubic archival struts just kind of get caught in the ground a little bit and need to be shaken loose. The takeoff is a very standard ascent, just burn up slightly and then just burn east. And then it's just a simple matter of targeting my way home in Kerbin. For a lot of flights, you'd basically be done by now and it's just a formality. But this flight's most interesting part is how I'm going to have to land it. Because I didn't put a parachute on board. That's the main way I saved weight. Parachutes are another 100 kilograms. And the ion engine only gives me a thrust to weight ratio of about one third in Kerbin's gravity, which is not nearly enough to stop me. Ooh, and there go the solar panels. Okay, so now I just need to come in and keep it straight. You'll notice I don't. It tumbles. A lot. I eventually do get the tumbling under control, though, which I need to, because if I do not land on the landing legs, I will explode. Because we're going to do what I was showing off in the beginning. We're going to litho break. This craft was designed to survive an impact around 100 meters per second, which is about the speed you'll get down to if you're just plunging into the atmosphere. I also turn on the ion engine right around now and use the batteries. I lost the solar panels as you saw earlier, so it's only battery power, but it lasts just until I get to the ground. Now I just need to cross my fingers, my toes, my hair, anything else I can think to cross, and really hope I do not explode horribly. Come on, Kerbal, live! Live! Wait, and he's done it! He is alive on the surface of Kerbin. Let's watch that in slow motion. <laughs> Simply beautiful. Well, that about wraps it up. This has been Matthew Carr. There's a craft file down in the description below if you want to try ramming into the planet yourself. And thank you for watching.